Forum project again. Yeah. All right, so, so we, we fixed these wires, right? Because yeah. they were burned where they tried to start a starter food or something. We got them all burned. So we fixed those. We just put electrical tape on them now, but they're all soldered and heat shrunk underneath that, right? Yeah. So these are ready to go, but now it has no wiring loom. So we got a new wiring loom for it. And this plugs into this CDI. Nope, that's for a different one. So here is the new wiring loom. And the problem with wiring looms is they all come the same length, but they, there's a lot of different configurations for four-wheelers, so we might have to move some stuff or reorganize, right? I don't think we need a handlebar switch. I think those ones work. So we'll save those maybe for another project. We got a CDI box, which will probably change because just in case this one's bad, right? We can test it after we get this. Once we get it running, we can make sure this one's good and then we'll know it's a good one. And then we have our starter solenoid, right? Goes in here. That goes in there. So hold that. And somewhere we have the ignition coil. And the wiring loom comes with all of this, so it's not really worth troubleshooting these things anymore because the whole wiring loom is like 22 bucks. Yep. Solves a lot of problems if you have issues. Which makes it even dumber that they cut the wiring looms up when I always, I always get them all cut up, right? Yeah. They could have just bought another wiring loom and got new CDI boxes and everything. Here's the ignition coil. I don't know, the original ignition coil is over here, but it faces the other direction. Yep. I'm going to have to modify that. And then it came with this new, maybe this is a CDI. I don't know which one of these is a CDI box. One of them, I guess this one, because this is the one the, yeah, it has to be this one. And what that does is that works like points. It, it times the spark, right? Yep. So that's what that does. So we need this. How was that one on there? You going to put that on there? And since this boot is too small, you're going to hook it under this little rubber band, here. Isn't that how the other one hooked on too? Oh, they had it zip tied on, didn't they? Yep. <coughs> this here. Oh, that you're going to take that boot off too? This one? Um, that's the new boot. Oh, that's the new boot. Alright, you already changed it. Okay. It's, it's hard to get on. Okay. Well, it's got to stretch over these little tabs, right? Yeah. And that holds this starter solenoid which we will have to hook wires to. So let's get this stuck in there for now. So we'll have to hook some wiring to that. And this we can plug in, because this just goes right to the CDI box, right? Yep. I think I got my plug backwards to turn around. Oh, we're getting the tools and sockets and ratchets. Yeah, we need those little ratchets there to take this one off. We'll change it for now. That one might still be good, but we'll change it because it'll, it'll be cheaper. All, the ratchet work. all right. Well, these are nylon nuts, so it'll take, it'll be hard to unscrew the whole way until you get past that nylon. And nylon acts like a anti-lock, so it purposely makes it hard to get the screw out, so it doesn't vibrate loose. Mm -hmm. So it'll feel hard to get loose the whole time. It won't ever loosen up until you get all the way past that nylon. So this one in the spot, put screw in it. They probably should have welded a nut on the back of that. You know, they're cheap four wheelers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a cheap four-wheeler. Believe it or not, Tau is made by the same company that the little green four-wheeler back there is made by. Yep, they make a bunch of sizes. All right. Turn the wrench around, get a ratchet switched. Okay, and we'll go clockwise until it's tight. I don't think it's the right plug, because that comes from our starter solenoid. That means it needs to go to the key switch, right? Yep. Not to that brake. All right, so we got a wiring loom. Let's get them all lined out. So let's see which one that wants to plug into. It's one of these, I think. Are those the same? Of course, they're the same plugs. Yeah. yeah. So one of those has to go to the starter, and one of these has to go to the brake. And of course, they use the exact same plug for both. So that'll be fun. I bet it's this black and red one, though. To go to the switch, we can check here in a minute. That's the brake. I think it was the brake. You can go check. I'm pretty sure it was the brake. But that definitely has the green and black wire like this one. Look. Goes to a spring. Anywhere. Yeah, that's the brake light. So I think that one has to go there. We have this one too. Wait, hold on. Yeah, these wires match. See the green and the yellow. Why are they got all the same plugs? Could have bought a different kind of plug for us. Make things hard on us. I think it goes here. This plug, see, that has green wire yep. and a yellow and red wire. And that's that. Why are they putting the same plugs? The other one had all different plugs, right? Yep. 
All right. Get it wire. <laughs> and this one goes up here to that box, right? Addition here. I'm not sure where that one goes. Oh, this goes to these wires that we usually spliced in. Yep. Remember? So we already got that hooked up. We don't need this plug because this is essentially the same plug. If we'd have bought this first, we could have just hooked these into there, right? Yep. Instead of having to splice them. But we'll we'll get it wired up and we'll take that out later if we need to. These are the batteries. Gonna have wire for batteries. So one of these has to go to the starter up here. Mm -hmm. So that has to go up to the starter. And one of these should have to go to the ground. And I think the red, and that's a red wire that used to be on there, right? Yep. Red wire has to go there, so this will go to the battery. The battery in this one sets in the body right here, I think, right? Yep. So this wire has to be long enough. Let's go inside the frame, would be smart, I reckon. This one has to go here, and this wire has to snake around and hook to here. Which it does. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to hook that up into there. And that starter works, we already checked that. Ideally, when we get it running, it should go grind, 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 I bet we're still going to run into some carburetor issues. Yeah, because he said that it wouldn't take tank, gas tank gas. Yeah. And this goes to the battery too, but I think this one goes to a ground wire. See this extra wire here? And I'm going to guess since this bolt is missing, that's probably where it used to go. Because this is missing. And it go, when we grounded the starter out, we just hooked it to here, right? Yeah. So we could probably find a bolt to go there. If not, we can hook it to a different bolt for temporary, but we can, that probably goes there, and then the red one goes there, and that should turn the starter. And then these, the rest of these wires, I think go to the controls. So we got these two plugs there, this here. See these wires here? Yeah. They plug into these. I don't know what they do. I think it's the brake, maybe? I can't tell if it's a reverse switch, maybe, I don't know. We'll get them through here. So those two wires definitely go there. I don't think we need that to run, but we'll go ahead and hook them up just for get them out of our way. Yep. So we know where they go. Those plugs are hard to plug in. Okay. So we don't need that wire. We need this wire to go somewhere, though. Let me see. That goes to that, I bet. I turn it over and plug her in. And that's the switches. That makes the starter switch go and all that. And this. Other one went to this brake light switch right here, the green and black and white one. Yeah. This went to the brake light switch. We'll have to tuck all these wires in. Oh, they got the wrong size plug on that. We need a male and a female, and they got the other one. So you're probably going to need the same wrench as we had last time. You need this ratchet, and it was a 10 millimeter, right? So here's your ratchet. And I can hold the 10 millimeter from this side, I think. Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. Somewhere. Man, you leave me a lot of room, do they? All right. Crank her loose. Got the ratchet changed. Got to go counterclockwise, remember? All right, crank her loose. This might be a good coil still, but we'll use the new one because theoretically it's a good one, right? We get it all running, we can test all this stuff we took off by switching it out, and then we'll come mark it good, and if we get another four-wheeler, we'll know we have good parts, right? So we just take a couple minutes to test our parts, we'll know they're good. We got a new spark plug, too. Oh, that end is pretty black. You want to just take it out and change yeah. it? We got a new one. Let's just change it. You can put all the new stuff in, we're troubleshooting it, and then we can take it back and put it back later and test them and see if they're good. You know why there's no rubber band over this spark plug holding on this foil? I think they just put that metal shield on it. I don't know why. It's just just different. This has got a crack here. Do you show, show the crack in the wire there? That could be problematic. I don't know if they can see. We'll see. Probably see it. You can see you working here, so put it up here. There's a crack in that boot right where your finger is, and I don't know, I don't see any bare wires showing, but that might make that not a good coil. We'll have to see. Alright, plug out of it and have a look at her. It's pretty black. It ain't fouled out. Looks like it's probably running really rich though, huh? Yeah. We got a new plug. We'll change that out to you just for good measure because. I think they gave us the right one. It says it is a C7 HSA, and this is not that size. Let's compare the sizes though. So what we want is we want the fart plugs to be the same length. The rest of those numbers have to do with temperatures and different brand numbers. Every brand has their own numbers. Yeah. 
This is, they're the same length. We want to make sure this won't hit the piston. That's the deal. If this is longer than this one, then it could hit the piston. We definitely don't want that. So we'll put this one in because it's new. I guess coil's okay. It's just the boot. It's all rotten. We'll see if it works, and then maybe we'll put this coil on it because it fits better, and then we'll just put that one on the shelf as a known good one. Chances are we'll get another one of these things somewhere. Seems to be a trend. Do you need me to hold a wrench or you got her? It doesn't need a bolt on this new Oh, it just has the, well, you gonna build your ratchet in there? Yeah, I think you need a size, you need 10. Hold on, I'll get you. I think it needs a 10 millimeter. These need to go here. For the coil. On the spark plug. Yep, put the spark plug wire on the core on that thing. These wires, I think, yeah, these are all from that stator. Probably we'll save this plug because. What? Can't see what you're doing back I, there. I'm kind of, they can see me a little bit. I, I got it straight like right down in the middle from the top, so they can kind of see both of us a little bit. It's missing like half the body screws. That happens a lot. Kids tend to take things apart. Mm -hmm. So when kids take them apart, they tend to mess things up a little. I don't know what they're doing. They lose screws because you gotta realize they're taking this apart outside on the dirt usually too, right? Yeah. So once the screw hits the dirt, it gets lost in the grass and never to be seen again, right? This rubber boot for the solenoid is cooked. Yeah, well I think like I said, I think they caught it on fire. All right, we got these wire I'm not cutters. Let's burn it to ground. Let's move our camera back over this way because we're working over here again now. All right, we about got wired up. Can you find the battery we need? Uh, yeah. Or a test battery? It's on top of that gray cabinet, I believe. I think it's charged up. If not, we'll use the battery out of the truck. <sighs> Don't forget we gotta solder these now. If I start wanting to get in a hurry and put this together, you need to remind me to fix these for real, all right? Okay, otherwise we'll be out in the woods riding it and it'll just start going kaput and I'll be like, what happened? And then I'll remember that I never finished wiring it. I think this goes to the lights, but the other one had the plug that matched this. It's like they used all the same wire colors but switched the plugs around just for your funsies. All right, we need to get hooked to this start. That wire right there. Okay, so what we got left? Just the wiring loom for the lights, I think, is all that's left, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't have that. So we have this plug for the brake lights here. But we don't have that. So I think we're all hooked up except for that and except for this brake light up here. I think this goes to the brake switch too. So I think we're all good to see if we can get her to start. Yep. Key on. That's more like it. Yep. All right, well, let's check for spark. I see spark. Yep. All right, so we got spark. Put a little dirty bit of gas in there and see what happens if we try to start. It might just go. We got a spark. That's the important bit. It might just go boom. I've never had one just go boom, but you know, someday it could happen, right? All right. On. Come on. Come on here. It runs. Not only does it run, it was in gear. <laughs> I started wanting to take off. <laughs> That's why we got it strapped to the table, right? Yep. Not only did it run, it started to want to go vroom. There is a shifter. It's an automatic transmission. It's probably stuck. Well, then how do you shift it into neutral? Uh, you just don't rub it up. Kind of like the Arctic Cat we have, right? You you put it in gear, and you can switch to four-wheel drive and not four-wheel drive, but you just accelerate to make it go, and it's probably the centrifugal clutch is probably just sticky. It'll come loose, or we'll take it apart and make it come loose, right? Now we just All need right. to refix the carburetor and it'll run. So we do have a fuel line here. I don't think, did it have fuel in it? I think it had fuel in it. I wonder if it's any good. It's 
smell good. It's pretty empty, bud. That's nearly empty, but it ain't got fuel and it ain't got much. Let's get this gas line bracket here fixed. See where I broke it? Yeah. We'll have to add something to fix that. We'll have to fix where they, they, they broke the gas, the fuel tank off. I'm not sure how you do that. All right. Okay. Well, let's put some gas in it, and I bet the carburetor ain't going to just go. Let's I mean, jack up the back wheels first. Yeah, we can put a jack under there, so let's take off on this. All right, that should be enough gas, hopefully. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we got, got to raise this tank up because it comes out the front here. Yeah, we can, yeah and it, when it was broke, that thing is broken, it lets the tank go on. All the gas is going to end up in the back here. We need it to be, you know, like this so the gas drains out this front. Actually, it could be a little higher than they had it. Are they missing some bracket? No, that's as high as they had it. Could have been a little higher than that even. Oh well. All right, so you want to try to squirt some gas in the starter, just see if it'll go. Um, Let's probably see just start and see if it'll go. Here we got the choke on. That's the choke on. All right, we got still hooked up the battery. Turn the key on, the wheels. Oh, these, the, these are gonna rip our cables right out. But first, as soon as it starts, they're gonna come right off. Let me get this cable unhooked so we can rearrange those. If that wheel turns, it's going to chuck these cables right off under our bench, and that will be that'll be bad. We don't want that. We have to tie these up or something. They're fighting me here. Yeah, what do you think that? Yeah, not not ideal. It ain't great, but it might work. Yeah, I think that'll work better. All right, so we got all that. We got all that. Not touching nothing. Not shorting nothing out. Ignition switch is on. Get in there. Okay. All right. I can't reach the throttle. All right. Squirt a little bit more in there and see if we can get her to prime off. Where'd my gas bottle go? Where'd my gas bottle go, bud? The little one? I set it somewhere. Oh, it's over there in front of your scooter. Go get that in front of the little dirt bike. Get that. That's what I do. I set stuff down where you can't see it later. Couple squirts of that. Watch it take off. I don't think so. I think we're going to take carburetor off. That should have been getting carburetor in there. I'm going to guess the the flat float valve is clogged up and it's not getting any gas in this float bowl because that should have drained. Remember, it had gas in the line? Yeah. As long as it's been sitting, it should have probably drained that unless the float's working correctly, which I doubt. So I'm guessing that they just had the float valve stuck and it isn't letting gas in that bowl. We'll find out. Find out. See what happens when we do this. On. Throttle. Try to get some through the carburetor and see if we can make it work that way. See if it's even bringing it in, right? Sounds like it wants to run. Mm -hmm. Let's shoot some right in here in this carburetor. You heard it go boom, exactly like I did. Turn this thing off. No, I don't. All right. All 
All right, something. You hear how fast it went? Brum, 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 brum. Yeah. Where'd you go? You're hiding? I'm here. <laughs> something ain't right, because that shouldn't have, it should have not idled that fast. It should have went back down. So something ain't good. We I imagine it's something stuck in that carburetor. Because when I let off the throttle, it was still revving, and it shouldn't do that. It should turn off or slow down. We can try it again, but I think it was revving too high. It does have a kill switch. I assume the kill switch works when we wired it up, right? Yes. We shoot a little more in there and see what happens, but it should... Should I let off that throttle? It should cut all the air off of it. It should starve it out. It looks like it's closing all the way, though. All right, let's see what we got. Try it again. What's worse going to happen? Blow it up, right? Should not be revving that high. Something going wrong. I heard it go almost as loud as the Arctic Cat. See, it should go and then stop. It should be getting gas out of this carburetor. Let's pop this carburetor off and see what we got going on. We'll have to remove the viewers over to the vent so we can do the carburetor. We're going to clean the vent off. We're going to do that. Yep. You want to start putting tools away? Yep, we're going to go all musty one with the carburetor. Yeah. Get off my cord. He likes to rebuild those carburetors, doesn't he? Yep. He works off some cool stuff, doesn't he? Let's get the carburetor off of it and see what we can do with it. Nobody would give us a free Cougar. I don't think that was free. I think you bought it, bud. Aren't you glad we put those wheels up on blocks? Can you imagine? Yeah. Goodness, it would have taken it right off our bench. Imagine if I was on it. Look who! Bam! Thing would have run right off our bench, I think. We got our tools put away. I'll move the scooter off. So, it was made with screws that are supposed to be like snapped off when they're well, torqued. Let's start from the beginning. We got the carburetor off, right? Yeah. So that's the beginning. We got carburetor off. Carburetor's off of it. And we're going to look at the float bowl because it doesn't look like it's getting fuel. I blew through this hose here, this line here where the fuel inlet is, and it's blocked. So something isn't getting fuel in there. And usually there's a valve in there. And you take this float bowl off to Probably clean can't it. Take the float off. But these have break off bolts. When they put it on, they don't have screws for us to get back out. So we're going to have to go and find a way to get those loose to see if we can get in there and, and unclog the float bowl. That is a stupid engineering decision. How about we just get a new carb? We might. We got nothing to do today, though, right? Yeah. I also noticed another problem when I took it off. This gasket yeah. right here, it goes on like this. And when I took the gasket off, this end here wasn't under the bolt. So you see the gap it leaves right here? Yeah. So what would happen is if it wasn't tight, it would allow air to get in here. And remember how it was revving real high, even yeah. when I left the throttle? That means it's probably getting too much air. So chances are this was like this when it was bolted on, and it was just leaving that air gap open. And it was just sucking air through here. Yeah. So that might help a little bit too to get that cleaned up. But I don't know. We'll see if we can, maybe we can drill these out or something. You think? Yep. To rebuild it? If not, we can buy another carburetor. I don't think they're terribly expensive. That, that's a really poor choice, engineering choice, but they're not very complicated. But yeah, that's a poor engineering. But it clearly doesn't have gas in it. So we had that gas line on for a while, right? Yep. And it clearly, it should be dumping gas out of that float bowl, and we're getting nothing. Even if I turn it upside down, there's no gas coming out of it. So it never got gas into here. The only gas that was burning is the gas I squirted in, right? Yeah. That's our problem. And you'll need a really big squirt bottle to get it running without that. Yeah, we'd have to run it on the bottle the whole time. We need this carburetor to work, so. Or else, I'm, it's not going to be really easy to ride with a bottle jammed under there. No. So I think what we'll do is we'll see if we can maybe drill these out and easy out to easy out the screws and replace them with screws if they're threaded at all. I assume they're threaded. They could just be riveted. But we can probably get it looked at. I'll we'll do that in the big shop though, right? Yeah. Can't do it out here in the barn. All right, so we made some modifications. So these screws in the bottom of this carburetor were not removable. They had, they're break-off screws. They thread in, and then when you get a certain tightness, they just snap off, and they do that at the factory, but it leaves an unserviceable screw. So what we did... Is we 
got the Dremel tool and we okay. shot the slit in there. I don't know if this can be visible on this camera, this low light or not. Hopefully you can see it. What I did is I took a Dremel tool and I just sacrificed this little podium a little bit and cut a slot in the existing screws they had that they broke off and I did it on both sides. And now you can put a screwdriver in there and turn them out. I don't know if that helped or not, bud. Made it so I can't see nothing. Maybe they can see better, but anyway, that makes it so you have regular flathead screws, and then we can take them out. And I haven't taken it apart yet, we just got the screws loose, right? So let's see what's going in here. Something was going wrong, it wasn't getting any fuel, right? See what surprises await it might, us. It might not be serviceable, there might be, it should just have a float in here, but I don't know, since it was locked that way, I don't know. They're only like $15 for the carburetor, so it probably isn't really worth doing. But you know, if you don't have a carburetor on hand. We already ordered it. Look at that. You see a problem? The gas gelled. That's nasty, huh? It looks like somebody glued a bunch of applesauce. There's our problem. That's why it isn't getting fuel. It's all clogged up. But that was not a serviceable part. We'd never know to get in there, right? So all this stuff that's in here, that's yeah. all gelled up gasoline or something. I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe somebody dooped a little bit of their applesauce lunch into it. I don't know. That's not good though, right? Yeah. Maybe I need no gasoline gelled up. Apparently it doesn't this time, so let's get all this nastiness out of here. It's probably like a mix of lacquer and we'll gel. Get it, we'll get it flushed out, cleaned up, but that's what's going on. That's all clogged up. Yuck. All right, let's see if we can get this float out of here. Be nice to have a known good carb though, but this is a known bad carb. Get this float out of there. All right there's your float valve that opens up, which is probably clogged, and that lets gas get into the float. You see the? Oh, it's packed. It's it's nasty in there, it's, isn't it? It, it? it it it's packed. Let's get a paper towel to dump all this, wipe this all off there. I don't know what that is. I've never seen. I mean, I've seen them turn into like lacquer. I wonder if someone put something in the tank that wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. I don't know what that would be, but. Power steering fluid? Uh, I was thinking more like sugar or I don't know, something. I don't know. I ain't never seen them like that. I've seen them gel up and turn into lacquer, but I don't know. It could be the kind of gas too. Then maybe they used the wrong kind of gas in it. I don't know. But yeah, that's, that's not good. That ain't gonna work. Get this paper towel so I can dump all this out of here without losing, losing my parts. And that is our problem. Pour sugar in it. That is definitely our problem. They had this carburetor off. Remember that that thing wasn't straight, that, that gasket? Yep. They had it off. So they had it off and then probably noticed they couldn't service it and then put it back on incorrectly real quick so they wouldn't lose it, which is nice. They didn't lose the carburetor. That's something, right? Yep. Like I said, they're, they're like 15 bucks, so it's not really a huge deal either way. You know what we never bought? What? Carburetor cleaner. This, you really, this, could, this could really do with some spraying out. You know what? Yeah. Really could help to spray this one out, couldn't it? It smells like gas, so I don't know what that is that they got in there. It smells like gasoline still. Maybe it lacquered and then gelled up. I don't know, I've never seen that. Maybe someone else has seen it, but I, I never have. All right, hey, see. Musty One rebuilds a lot of cars. Maybe we should ask him in the comments. Maybe box. he's seen something like that, right? Yeah. Come on. Could be someone put Ooh. oil or something in there that wasn't supposed to be there. Could be. <coughs> I don't know if this will come out. Ooh. There we go. We'll take it all out and get her all cleaned up. All right, I'm gonna clean her out with something. Now that should, this valve here, remember we put this hose on there earlier? Yep. This is where the gas comes in. Remember, we couldn't blow through this. And now we can, right? Yep. So that'll let gas into that float bulb. We couldn't do that before when you put this hose on there. It, you couldn't blow, as hard as you could blow, you couldn't get that to go through, right? So that was the surprises that awaited us. There's always something, right? Yep. There's always something. Could be somebody dropped a sandwich into the gas tank. A sandwich? Yep. They're just like eating it and... Drop their lunch in it, huh? Yep. Well, let's see if we can get something to squirt, flush that out of there with. That's really yucky in there. Uh, oh, yuck. All the way down in here. You got this cleaned up. 
We still need to flush it out better. I don't know if that's just the gasoline gelled or if they maybe put an additive in it or I don't know. Could be they put a solvent or additive in it. I don't know. It's really not good though, is it? Could be the additive goes bad after a few years. And the additive makes it well, gel up. We don't have any carburetor cleaner here. Let's so. ask Musty One in the comment box. Yeah. Maybe he'll see our video and tell us what we what we don't know. He's better at carburetors than we are, right? Yeah. He builds and rebuilds them all the time. Imagine what surprises we'll find in Mom's lawnmower carburetor. That one still runs good. Oh. Well, we don't have any carburetor cleaner, so I think we'll do is we'll just flush this out with a little gasoline. Could be some surprises in the four truck carb too. We'll flush this out with a little bit of gasoline and hopefully we can get her cleaned up a little bit enough to run. We'll see if that also, we'll see if that dissolves in gasoline. That gel we're taking down there, it might dissolve. Get all nice and clean. All right, that's garbage. Get that off there tray too. All right, where's my gasoline squirt bottle? This will be stinky. Also feels good on cuts. I did not know that. Gasoline, it'll burn when you get any cuts. See that ugly thumb that I got right there? Yep. It'll burn when I get it in there. We need a brush, don't we? Kind of need a brush. A toothbrush or something? How about we just dunk it in diesel? Well, it ain't stuck. We used diesel to get the other one stuck, but this one isn't stuck. It's just got a bunch of. Crusty's in I think it's dissolving. The slide See is that? plastic. See it? I think it's, yep. it's it's melting it. Whatever it is, it's melting it. There's no gel anymore. It's well, just... I scraped most of it out, but yeah, I think it's melting it. So as long as it melts it, we'll just flush it around and then we'll dump it out. It's just gas. I bet they put in an additive. I don't know. I've never seen that. It could just be the gas going bad. I know modern ethanol gas does weird stuff. And you, I'm used to working on old stuff where you had, you know, non-ethanol gas for a lot of motorcycles and stuff. Yep. That ethanol gas, it can do, it can do some weird stuff. It's I better for the environment, but... We once opened up a gas tank for a copper-colored Honda and we found purple gas. Yeah, I think they would run a mixed gas on that. And it was really bad gas, right? It stunk. Yep. That was really terrible gas. All right, this is your overflow tube. I don't know if I showed you that. This tube right here? Yep. If you look in here, there should be a hole in it somewhere. I guess right there in the very top. Very tiny hole in it. Yep. What happens is if your float gets too full, it'll overflow this pipe and it'll come out here so that your carburetor doesn't backflow into your engine. So that's important too. We'll have to make sure that's cleaned out too. We don't want it to get too much. Because then it'll backfire? Yeah, it could catch on fire or something, but you just flood it out, wouldn't run. So that needs to be clear too, so it doesn't get in there. Mixed gas turns purple. Usually gas just turns like it starts to really smell like the 41 in the Sportster. The 41 had really bad gas in it, right? Yeah. It's wreaked havoc. It took a long time to get it all out of there too, because that's a giant yeah. fuel line. The gas tank, and that's all the way back in the bed. In the truck bed, it took a long time to get all that bad gas out. And this, it's just a little, little, little tank that's not even really full until we pour some gas in it. Besides the carb, I think it's gonna run. Mm, this definitely will do it better, right? It's gonna do better than it did with all that crap in there. Okay, so this has to float, so. Will it sink, will it float? It seems like it wants to float. See them floating? Yep. They're floating. That's good. Maybe the rattle is just to keep it from floating too high. I imagine it's just a manufacturing flaw. Get that cleaned up. It's completely clogged up too. Good news is whatever that stuff is, it seems to want to melt when the gas touches it. Mm -hmm. So it might not be too much of a deal. If it's in the whole engine, it should just melt away and go into the fuel and pop out the exhaust. Maybe we could just ditch this one and wait for the new one. Well, what else are we gonna do? You got plans for today, do you, but whatever's in there came out. All right, so let's get these back in there.
All right then. Put her back together. Now we're just going to use these same screws since we already turned them into flatheads. Yeah, I bet the knees. The they probably. Um, Clark is going to have to have flat heads drilled into. I don't know. Want we'll to see? I could probably find screws that fit this, but they're pretty small, and the screw drawer I'd have to dig through is pretty mm -hmm. full of little screws. It'd take me a while. So let's just put yeah. these back on for now. Don't try this out. Do not try to steal your dad's gravel and chop holes and screws. Alright. We got them in the wrong holes. They don't line up anymore. But you know what? Probably don't matter. This is a thin wire. Mm-hmm. So I was using a shove through that little valve. Alright, so everything's cleared out. Everything seems to want to work. Yeah, the clutch is a little bit, it does stop. If it's on the ground, it would Yeah, if it's on the ground, it wouldn't go. It just kind of slightly want to push, just because we got the wheels off the ground. Sounds good though, doesn't it? Yep. Well, you want to get her put back together? Yep. There are no surprises coming out the muffler either. No, sounds real good.